channel for the very first time kindly click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you would be notified when we upload our videos let me say congratulations to our white students all over the world and for people writing echo we want to wish you a successful exam and that's the reason why we are here we're doing our possible best to make sure that you come out in flying colors and we will not stop doing that for all of you that have reached out to us thank you for the prayers thank you for the motivations thank you for the for, for the kind gestures, we really do appreciate. You know, without you guys, we would not be here. Those encouragement, you know, those 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 encouragement are really, really wonderful. Those motivations are what actually keep us going. So, I want to sincerely thank you. Today, I love the qualitative analysis, honestly. And I just want to take us through. Please pay attention to this video. You know, I've always said that, that when it comes to exams like this, we want to do all our possible best analytically to be sure of what we actually give to the populace and to make sure that if you watch this video to the end you should not find the exam very very difficult because we're going to cover a lot of things that might be coming out in that exam you're writing so pay maximum attention we are here and we'll give you nothing but the best you are watching this youtube channel for the very first time click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified when we drop another video Quickly today, very interesting. We have some specimen here. We actually want to use for our qualitative analysis. Don't forget, we are always predicting questions. And for some time now, you know, God has been helping us. And here we are again to do the same thing today. So very quickly, we are going to be working on the specimen C and the specimen D for this year exam as given by Neko. We're going to be doing that. You know, I love the practical because it's going to test a lot of things. Mind you, this analysis is based on my own opinion. Oh, you might not agree with what I'm doing, okay, and you might agree with what I'm doing, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is the little I can give, you know, as regards the exam to see that you guys come out in flying colors. So if you disagree with what I'm doing, fine. That's just my own opinion. This is my own opinion. So let's get started. So now, this is a predicted question. C is an inorganic salt and D is an organic compound. You know, as given to us from NECO. Carry out the following exercises on C and D. Record your observations and identify any gas involved. State the conclusion you draw from the results of each test. Then A, put C into a test tube. Now, let me quickly say this. You know for NECO, they would have written the test, they do like that, not unlike YF, that you have to write all these things yourself. You can see, they have saved you a whole lot of stress. So, in fact, they will even put the allotted mark in front of the numbers. So, NECO is, you know, they have done all that for you. But we are going to be writing it. So, when you see, they would have written the test, they would have written the test for you. Your own is just filling the observation and filling your inference. I want to believe that. Okay. okay, so let's get started. Let's start our, with our specimen C. As labeled, they will label this specimen C. Let's take our test two. Let's take our test two. Okay, so let's put little amount of specimen of specimen C. This is my specimen C as instructed. Okay, so they said to so the first portion, put C in a test tube. Can you see that? Put C in a test tube and add about 10 centimeter cube of distilled water so this is my test tube then this is my distilled water or any water you can have around you you know about 10 centimeter cube so let's see 10 centimeter cube you might not really measure it you know but just since i have my measuring cylinder here let me follow the instructions so 10 centimeter cube let's have it into c okay so let's check 
So let's go from here now. So please, you know, they would have actually written all this for you, but if they have not written it, you can still do that. So to the first question, put C in a test tube so we can say A, okay? That's C, sample C, plus distilled, sample C plus distilled water. Let's see. So these are results now, you can see. C plus distilled water, you can see that. C plus distilled water, you can see. This is a clear solution, dissolves completely. You can see it. So let's record now. So we can have our observation. C dissolves completely to form a clear and colorless solution. You see that now? No, very clear colorless solution. So what is this? So we can say C is soluble in water. And that's the reason why chemistry is interesting. You can see, we are just trying to record what we have seen. After we have dissolved C, you can see a clear solution, meaning it dissolves completely in water. C dissolves completely to form a clear and colorless solution like we are seeing right here now. And that's the reason why I, I do take my time. You know, I would have even uploaded this video a long time ago. But because I like to do the practical, you know, I'm, I'm so much interested in practical than theory. And that's the reason why a lot of us forget all these things. Because most times we are taught theoretically. So I want to do it practically. That's why I know it, I delayed a bit to get all the salt and every necessary materials that we need. Okay, so that is that. So then I said, test the solution with litmus paper. You know, very important, you know, I'm saying that this is a guide. They might ask you to test with litmus paper. They might ask you not to test, but we are doing all the tests. And we are sure that the tests we have done, what they will ask you will still be within the test that you have done. So, plus litmus paper. So, when you did not specify like that, then you need to test with both. Which means, if a solution has effect on blue, it cannot have effect on red. I don't know if that's clear. Okay, so let's see. So, let me see red first. Let me test with red. Since they just said litmus paper. So, let's test with red and see. You can see. It doesn't have any effect on red. The solution doesn't have any effect on red. Let's test for blue. Let's take blue and test for blue. Let's test blue. Let's see blue. So, okay, blue. You can see the solution is changing blue to red. Can you see that now? Okay, so let's record. If it changes blue to red, what is the meaning? That means the solution is acidic. So plus litmus paper turns blue litmus paper red, right? So here we can now say solution is what is acidic. I don't know if that's clear. So the solution is acidic. And that's the reason why it's able to what? Turn blue litmus paper to You can see, very nice test, direct and straightforward. Okay, let's see that now. So they said, let's move to this now. So they said divide and divide into three portions. So this one now, we are dividing into three portions. We are dividing into three portions, okay? So let me use this. Let me say this is the first. Let me use this as second so that so this will now be the third. You get that now. So let me just have little here. Let me have little here too. Okay. So let's now. This is my first portion now. So let's go now to the first portion. To the first portion, add sodium hydroxide. Aqueous in drop and in excess. Please follow the number, but you know, luckily they might have written all this for you. But if not that, you have to follow the number. So you have one first portion, right? 
plus sodium hydroxide in drop. Please write the aqueous in drop. In, in drop. So let's see it in drop. I have my, okay, I brought my, so sodium hydroxide, this is my prepared sodium hydroxide, you can see it. So this sodium hydroxide, let's see it in drop now. Let's follow the instruction, please. In drop, let's see. Don't forget to take one less solution before we start it. So let's see. Good one. Now look at it. Is it, is it still colorless? No. You can see like a white, let me do this. You can see sticking to the walls of the test tube. That's what we call a white gelatinous precipitate. It's sticking to the wall, you can see. It's sticking from the colorless solution before now. It's now sticking to the walls of the test tube. So let's record. First portion of sodium hydroxide in draw. So we can say white gelatinous precipitate you get that now white gelatinous precipitate so if you are using sodium hydroxide and we have white gelatinous precipitate what are the ions present zinc 2 plus okay aluminium 3 plus present don't forget calcium is chalky lead is white so white gelatinous so our zinc and aluminium is what is present. Okay, you now said in what now? In drop and in excess. So plus excess now. Plus excess. Let's see plus excess now. Excess sodium hydroxide. Let's see. So we're adding this now in excess. Let's see what is going to happen. See it in excess. Oh my God. Are you seeing something? That is dissolving now in excess. Let's have excess. Can you see it's becoming colorless again? Like the way we started. You can see that now. Colorless like the way we started. You can see. Colorless now. The precipitate has dissolved. Okay? So, plus excess. That means precipitate. Right? Dissolved. And if the precipitate dissolved, our zinc and our aluminum is definitely present. I don't know if this is clear. Very clear, right? So, we are done with the first portion. Let me place it here. Let me remove this. Let me place it here because I've used it. Okay, so let's now to the second portion. Let me reduce this. Okay, let me use this. You can see we started with the colorless solution. To the second portion, what did they ask us to add? Add Okay, you have added this to the first portion, so it should be, since you have added this to the second portion, add ammonia. Since you have added this, the first, so let's add ammonia now in drop and in excess. So this is my ammonia solution prepared. I've already prepared my ammonia solution here. So let's add in drop. So let's see in drop also. Can you see that now? You can see colorless is changing again. Let me shake it. You can see the white. Like when we added sodium hydroxide, you can see those gelatinous precipitate. So second portion now. Don't forget the like second portion. So second portion of C second portion let me indicate it because you know we we'll do it for C and D so that second portion of solution C right so second portion right plus ammonia now in what? in drop I want to believe we are still together in drop so we got our white gelatinous precipitate again so our white gelatinous precipitate once again our zinc and aluminium too is suspected here they are present because 
they will form white gelatinous with this. Now, let's now go in excess now. In drop and in excess. So let's see it in excess. Let's go in excess. Let's see in excess. Let's see what it will give us. In excess. Are you seeing something again that is now dissolving those white? You see, as I shake now, you can see you are not seeing the white gelatinous precipitate sticking to the walls of the test tube again. So let's go again. Can you see that now? Let me add excess so that you see. And that's the reason why we try as much as possible to carry out the experiment here. Can you see that now? Dissolve. The white precipitate dissolved again in excess ammonia. You can see that very clear. Can you see very clear now? Very, very clear. If you have not subscribed to this channel, you are not doing well. <laughs> you are not doing well. This is the hope of chemistry. We simplify it to understand it and show you practically. Can you see that now? Dissolved. Precipitate dissolved. So, we can now add white gelatinous precipitate in drop, right? Plus excess now. So, the precipitate dissolved in excess, right? And when the precipitate dissolved now, because aluminum cannot dissolve in excess ammonia. So, I can say my zinc is confirmed. Here's a confirmatory test. That, oh, the zinc ion there is pronounced. Because it is soluble, you can see. The precipitate dissolves in sodium hydroxide. The precipitate dissolves again in ammonia. So Z is confirmed. I want to believe somebody is here. Yeah. So if you are not subscribed to this channel, you're not doing well. This is chemistry and out. You know, we make teaching and learning fun, and that's why we are here. Okay, so let's move on. Now look at this. Let me quickly say something here. They said to the top portion, add HNO3 and ammonia. Now, in the instruction they gave us as teachers, they did not ask us to prepare this and this. Do you see that? So, my prediction is that if they did not ask us to prepare it, they might not be asking us to use it. But you know, these days, these exam bodies are very funny. They spring surprises. That's why I'm just putting this. But 65%, they should not ask us to use this because this and this is not in the instructions given to us as teacher to prepare. That's why I have this dough, but I didn't prepare this. I didn't put up buying it. But I, I still want to show us, if it is given on that day, if you if you add this third portion, if you add HLO3, let me do that now, very fast. So the third portion, I doubt if they will ask us because this and this is not in the instruction. And since this is not in the instruction, they should not ask us to use it. But you know, they can spring surprises. So if they ask us to add it, this is what we are going to get. I want to believe that is clear now. It's not in the instruction. They didn't ask us to prepare it as instructors, but I'm just chipping it in. But adventure, they ask us to test on that day. If they put it on that day, we are not going to hold them. You know, we are not going to query them. They are the exam body. So let's know it now. So that when we see it on that day, we know what the test is like. So third portion plus HNO3. Right? If you add the channel 3 to the third portion, you are not going to see anything. So it's a no visible reaction with the same. I'm talking from experience now. No visible reaction with the same. But when you now add your AGNO3, you are going to see a white precipitate. A white precipitate. You are going to see a white precipitate. And when you use this very particular silver nitrate, on a particular salt, and you see a white precipitate, you can say chlorine is actually present, or our CO3 2 minus is what is present. And that's the reason why, in my predictions, I said followed by what? AGNO3. You are going to see a white precipitate. Now, when you see the white precipitate, and you now add excess, when you add excess plus excess ammonia, this precipitate. The precipitate will dissolve. Yes. The precipitate will dissolve. And if the precipitate will dissolve, then you can now add and confirm our theory. Now, the reason why I had to just add this is because the salt given to us 
is zinc chloride. Do you see that now? So we have tested for zinc. They should not ask us to test for chlorine because this reagent that is supposed to test for chlorine, they didn't ask us to prepare it. But you know, if they spring up surprises and they ask us to test for chlorine, this is what we are going to have. So in the real sense, the normal conditions, they are not supposed to. Not because they are not supposed to, but because they didn't tell us to prepare the reagent to test for it. That's the reason why I didn't even buy it. It's a bit expensive. Silver nitrate is a bit expensive. Okay, So that's why I didn't even bother buying it. But if you see something like this on that day, understand that this is what we feel. I want to believe this is clear and distinct, very clear. So this is the soda, and that's the reason why you can see we have confirmed zinc here. And if you have access to prepare this, we will confirm chlorine again to now show us that, you know, since we confirm this and we are confirming this, it means if they react together, this is the sort of uh, testing for. Very clear. Okay, I want to believe you are still following. So let's move to that's that. For, for C, you can see very easy, very simple. We have shown that practically. Okay, so let's move to the next one now. Let's move to the next one. I love this. I love this because this test is interesting. So let's move to the next one. So the next one, put the heat in a test tube and add about 10 centimeter cube of distilled water. Test the solution with litmus and divide into three portions. Okay, let's go now. Let me have this. Is D. It says it's an organic compound. So let's have D. Let me wash this first. Because you know, some of these things are very funny. This is my water. Let me wash this. Let me wash this because I've used it for. Let me wash this too. Okay, so let's have D now. Have D some chalky amount of D. Okay, now this D now put D in a test tube and add about 10 centimeter cube of distilled water. About 10 centimeter cube. You know, if you don't have it, you can just measure with you know, just but since I have my measuring cylinder, that's how I'm Okay, now look at it. Let me check where you can see. You see that? Okay, so let's record. Let's let's move on. So we have B now. B put D. So D sample D. Okay, plus. Distilled water. Now look at that. This is not white. It's like creamy. For me, some people can record white too. It's fine. But I'm seeing like a cream color, you know, like this cream color. So I can say a creamy collider solution formed. A creamy collider solution. Form because it's not, so if you say white collider solution for me, it's still fine. That, but, you know, I'm just seeing creamy, or you can say, you know, if you say white, fine, but I create a creamy collider solution form. What will be this? What will be that? So I will say solution D is an heterogeneous mixture. I want to believe some people are still here. We are just trying to use a chemistry terms. Heterogeneous mixture. You know, the reason why we said it's heterogeneous mixture is because you will know that they have dissolved something here. It's not like this. Let me show you something. Now, now look at this. It's a, a lot of this. This is an homogeneous solution. Because even you, you will be thinking there is nothing here. And don't forget, I have dissolved a salt in this place. And even use it to test some ions. But it's still showing like this. So, this is an homogeneous mixture, right? This is it's so obvious. This is an heterogeneous mixture, meaning different. So we can feel that, oh, they have dissolved something here. So this homogeneous, this heterogeneous, right? Okay. I want to believe we are clear. So to this, what I test the solution with litmus paper, right? Okay. So let's test with litmus paper. Let's test with litmus paper. 
I've told you if it have effect on blue, it will not have on red. But they didn't specify. So let's test with the two. We're going to test with the two and see. So I'm testing with blue now. Testing with blue. Look at. I want us to see something. Let me test with red first. Look at red. Obviously, it's not changing, right? But I want us to see something here. I always like to record what I see, not what I want to see. I always record. That's what I told you. When you are doing practical, record what you have seen. There is nobody that will penalize us for that. So let's see. Did you see it's changing? This solution is slightly, you can see, slightly acidic. Because it's changing blue to red, can you see? It's not that obvious, but you will know. Why did I say it's not that obvious? Let me show you something. You can see this. Look at the red. Let me use another blue or something so that you see what I'm saying. Let me use it on this. This is an acid too. Did you see the red? Did you see it's pronounced? This, which means this is very, very acidic than that. So I can record plus litmus paper. It's just slightly. So plus litmus paper. You know, tons blue litmus paper red. Do you see that now? So we can now say solution. D is slightly, is slightly acidic. I don't know if that is clear. Slightly, it's not that pronounced. That's why you can see it's not really bleaching the blue litmus paper. So it's slightly acidic. I don't believe somebody is still here. Okay, so we are done with this so that we can continue our test from here. We can continue our test from here. I don't believe we are still here. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, it's very interesting. I want to believe you are enjoying the class. Okay, let's move on now. Test. Okay. Our observation. Right. And our inference. Okay. So let's have our table. So we are we. Plus this must paper. Okay, we are, they, they, said, they, they said we should divide into three portions again. Okay. To the first portion. So that will be B Roman figure one now, right? Solution. Okay, first portion of D now. First portion of solution D plus what now? Plus dilute ACL. Now the reason why I want to dilute ACL here, they might write two points there because they told us in the structure. To prepare 2.0 molar ACL, that's what I did here. So, which means that if they are telling us for for our milk or for our sample D, you know, for our sample D, if they are telling us to add dilute ACL, it means it is the 2.0 molar they told us. You know, it was specifically stated in the instruction. So, and that's what I will be doing. So, this is it. Let me add this. Just follow me, follow me. Okay, so this is the first portion. This is the first portion of the collider solution. Then I want to add, maybe they said about 10 centimeter or 15. But look at this. Please pay attention to this. Did you see something? Now bring me, look at that. Can you see? It's like it's forming a white gelatinous from the normal solution that we have here. You can see. It's like it's forming a white gelatinous. Look at the milk. Look at the milk. Do you see it? Look at the milk now. It's just like they are coagulating on the addition of that. So, can you see that? Can you see the milk? Can you see like... They are forming white particles, like there is white particles in the milk at the addition of the 2.0 molar HCl. Okay, so what will I say? What will I say? Then I can add that this 
I can record two things here. I can record observation. Cuddling. Cuddling of milk. Or cuddling of sample this. Or, you know, for students, let's be, let's be lenient for students. I can just say coagulation. Or cause. Do you see that coagulation occur? Why the coagulation occur? Decrease, decrease in pH, okay? Induced the coagulation of solution, solution D. Now let's test. You know the way it was when we tested with blue litmus paper? Let's see it now. You can see. Very pronounced, you can see. You can see, like, you have now big, big particles of you know, big, big particles are now coming out. You can see, very pronounced. You can see the you can see as if they are coagulating. Okay, so let's test with blue litmus paper again now. Let's test with blue so that you can see what I'm saying. After I recorded decrease in pH, which means the acidity has increased. That's the meaning. The acidity has increased. Did you see it? You know when we tested with milk, the acidity was not that pronounced like this. I don't know if you are getting what I'm doing here. You know when I tested the, the acidity, the red litmus paper, the blue litmus paper is not showing an obvious red. But on the addition of this, now look at it. Can you see? Can you see the, the, the particles? The particles in this solution now is becoming very very obvious can you see it now do you see it do you see can you see it now i hope somebody is saying something here so and that's the reason why i said the mix are coagulating like they are you know they're clumping together so coagulation of course decrease in pH. why did i say decrease in pH? because when i tested with litmus paper now i saw the acidity has increased and from our ph scale when the when the the ph decreases it means the acidity increases do you understand? Because when you are going down the pH, the acidity is more pronounced. I want to believe somebody is getting something here. So I can say coagulation occurs, okay, decrease in pH induced. Because as the pH decreases, it induced the coagulation of the milk. And the addition of, you know, you are seeing a pronounced particle. All like this. Are you seeing a pronounced particle here? No, that's different. Look at the, the particles here. Look at the solution. I want to believe somebody is seeing something. You can see the differences. Differences in so views. Okay. So that's why I said my observation is coagulation occurs. Okay. Then decrease in pH induces the coagulation of solution D and the addition of this our two molar HC. I want to believe that's clear. So let's see now. So the second portion adds soda line and it's the mixture. This is my soda line. You know, in our instructions, they ask us to provide soda line. So Add soda lime and eat the mixture. So let me do some little eating here too. Let me add this. Okay. Let me just do some simple, just little eating. So this is the sample, right? So let's have, let me have it in another test two. Let me raise this test two. Come here. Okay, let me use this. I think I've not used this before, right? So. Let me use this. That's our sample, the solution of our sample D now. Soda line. You know, this is my soda line. You can see. So let me add, then we eat. Okay. So, plus eat now. So let me have this. You know these things, and it, that's the reason why I I take my time to actually do all this. It's stressful though, but you know, just to show us that these things are real, and that's what I used to you tell my people. I'm always this is it, right? This is the solution. Okay, I think this, no, this is it. Okay, this is it. So, let's now eat it. So, it's stressful. That's why you see me. Most times I delay my videos because I just want to get some facts and, you know, just 
For me too, it's a learning process for me. Even for me as an educator, it's a learning process. Yes, it's a learning process. It's a learning process. I just want to, you know, try to to test also with litmus paper to see. So let's eat like they have said. Let me do the handle. Well, you know. Okay, so let's go now. Let's do some eating. This is my soda line now. Let's see if we eat. What is going to give us? I want to try probably if a gas is coming out. That's why I'm trying to insert this and show us something. I don't know if somebody seen something. Can you see the edge of my blue red litmus paper? It's turning blue. Can you see it? Okay, let me continue. Probably a gas is evolving, then we can see that so that it will be well pronounced. Are we still together? Okay. Now look at it. Can you see it? Changing the red litmus paper. Let me try to, you know, probably perceive the guy. You have to be very careful because some gas are poisonous. Let me just try to sweep. Hmm. Wow. Wow. I'm perceiving something like a fish smell. Like a dead fish smell. <laughs> That's why you have to be very careful as a chemist. So, plus dilute, right? So let's see two now. What's the next thing? To the second portion, second portion, right? Plus what? Soda line plus it do you, do you see that now evolution of a gas because you know my blue litmus paper my red litmus paper is turning blue evolution of a gas which turns red litmus paper blue that's the first thing i discovered so i can say what the gas is aka line yes now because it's turning red it was the purple so the gas is aka line another thing is with the smell of a you know a fish like a dead fish that's what i'm perceiving like a dead fish and if you remember from these characteristics it means that the emai, that, that's the characteristics of the emai functional group. Yes, they smell like a dead fish. Yes, that's how they smell. They smell like a dead fish. Yes. So, that's what I'm perceiving. Like a something, you know, like fish. Like this, you know the way this fish smells. So, then the last one now. Emai present, that's the emai functional group present. Then three. To the where is it? Okay, the last one now. To the second portion, add soda line. To the third portion, add so third portion plus sodium hydroxide aqueous, right? Then plus CuSO4 aqueous. So let's do that. I think that's the last test. So let's try that. See our milk. Let me throw this away and try to wash with water. Then that will be. Then I'll just explain. That is my water. So I'll just explain my own, you know, my own view of this test. My own view of this test. My own view of the test. And I think that's all for today. I want to believe you enjoyed this practical class. Okay, so. So this is the, the solution D. They said what? Plus sodium hydroxide. Let me just make sure like three centimeter cube. Where's my, where's my measuring cylinder? So that I can just measure like three. Okay, this is it. 
So three of sodium hydroxide. Let me measure like three centimeter cube. I don't want it to be too much because I still need to use this solution. So three centimeter cube. This is four. I need three. Let me just use three. Okay, this three to heat. I've added, you know, like the question, they said sodium hydroxide. So I just added three centimeter cube because I, I still need to be so. I added it then with drops of copper sulfate. Let's see. This is my copper sulfate solution. Can you see the purple color now? Do you see it? The purple color so pronounced. The purple color is pronounced. Very, very pronounced. Do you see that now? Very clear, right? Purple. Okay. So we can now do something here. So at the addition of this, at the addition of sodium, the, the solution, at the addition of this sodium hydroxide, the solution becomes more cloudy okay the solution becomes more cloudy then at the addition of this very pronounced now you can see the purple color the purple coloration formed then i can say protein is what is confirmed that means that thing that tested as protein in it and that is just my own view of this. Now, let me say something here. Let me just say something here, then I will. That's my own view. Okay. Let me say something here. Let me let me say something here. Now, this is clear already. This is clear. But I have something to say here. This first portion, you know, the D they gave us is a powdered milk, according to the instruction given. But look at this. I discovered that at the addition of this ACL, what actually happens is one of the properties of protein. If you want to read, it's one of the properties of protein we call denaturation. That's what happened. Because the meaning of denaturation is that the protein will lose their identity, they lose their structure when you expose them to extreme temperature or an extreme pH. Do you see that now? So we call it denaturation. That means they will lose their biological activity and their structure on the addition of this ACL. Because since this is two molar ACL, this, the concentration is high. So when you add it to the powdered milk, what happens? We denature them from what denature. That means their nature will be distorted. And that's the reason for this coagulation of milk. Do you get that now? And that's the reason why I said decrease in pH. Which means I have exposed the protein to, you know, this sort of a pH value that is high. Do you get that? To pH value that has decreased, to acidity that has increased. You should understand that. When I say the pH decreases, it means the acidity increases. And that's the reason. So this one is testing our ability on the denaturation of protein. I want to believe that is clear. That's, that's my own view according to what I got. Now this one, this second portion plus soda line. Because soda line is the combination of sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide. You understand? But the real one that is more pronounced here is this. So even your soda line will be acting as this. And the reason why we prefer soda line to this is because one is not the requisite, number two, it doesn't attack glass. That's the reason why we do soda line. Okay. So the soda line will still be working as this, which is what is happening here plus it. What happened here is what we call hydrolysis of protein. The breaking down of protein by either acid or base. So this is hydrolysis of protein. And that's the reason why when it broke down, what happens? In protein, when protein breaks down, we are going to have amino acid. And that's why what I'm smelling is passing like a dead fish. That's why I said the amine is present. Do you see that? So the functional group of the amine is present because as I begin to add this hydrolysis, what happens? It will break down the protein into amino acid and different, different 
you know, different different sub atomic particles. I don't know if that is clear. So and that's the reason why I, I am perceiving something like this, changing my red equals paper to blue, and I'm saying, oh, the man is present because of this smell that I'm getting. So it is the hydrolysis of protein. That's my own view. Why the last one is our confirmatory test for protein, which we call the Burette test. The Burette test. Very clear. So you can see the three tests we are doing is still on that protein. They are testing us about the denaturation of protein. In fact, these two properties of protein is so pronounced. These two properties of protein. Why this one is not a confirmatory test to tell us? Because in protein, we have the amino acid. When you break down protein, pro amino acid is just like the monomer. Protein is just like the polymer. So when you break them down, you get the super. And that's what the particle For me, that's what the particle is testing on. We might not be able to test for all this, but I'm sure the test, they will bring out the test for all this. So if you understand all this, even a very smart student, if you are able to study this table well, even without being the practical, that you can record the observation and inference based on what you have watched on this channel and based on what I've written and my explanation on this channel. This is chemistry and that, and that's why we are doing all our best to make sure you don't only pass your exam. In fact, some of these tests are tertiary institution tests. I'm telling you, some of these tests are tests that even so, if you are in under level or you have even done why you are writing jam, all these things are very, with their rudiments, their rudimentary chemistry. That even when you get to a institution, you are going to face them. I hope that's clear. So that is that for that very interesting test. That will be the end of the test for today. If you have not subscribed to this channel, can you subscribe to this channel? I love you guys. Thanks for the prayer. Thanks for the motivation. Thanks for the word of encouragement. God bless you guys. So we'll be meeting again on this channel. Do have a wonderful day. I wish you success in your exam. Bye, chemistry. Again.